Welcome to Flight Test, I'm Peter. And I'm Josh, and today we're gonna see if we can take down a drone with a drone. <laughs> So Peter, what are you going to be flying? Uh, I'm going to be flying the Phantom. The Phantom. You're going to be yeah, flying the by, bad guy, right? Yeah, by D, uh, DGI. <laughs> <laughs> and to intercept that, we have our good friend Rick Musselman from Tice UAV Solutions. And he, what do you have, Rick? This is a DJI Flame Wheel 550. Okay. And it's got our new Excipio system on it. And that's Latin for capture, right? Latin for capture. Mm -hmm. And gotcha. that's what we're going to do. We're going to capture the Phantom. Now, if you guys can't tell, this is a net gun. And there's going to be some challenges that you're going to have to overcome this. What, what are the challenges you have? Um, well, just acquiring the drone, getting it in the right, uh, right frame picture, and, and being able to see it, and then uh, close enough to capture it. Awesome. So, Peter, you ready to be the bad guy? Yeah. Try to catch me. Ricky, you ready catch to try to can. take him out of the air? Uh, no problems. Let's do this. So in the real world, a drone's just not gonna be floating in front of your face. It's gonna be moving at a pretty quick speed, especially if someone has some bad intentions for it. So the goal here is to have Peter flying from point A to point B, trying to evade and get away from the capture drone, which Rick Musselman is flying. And the goal will be to have Rick be able to nab him before he gets to his destination. In this case, it's the end of the runway. Uh, yes, I have you now. Where are you? Wait, you don't. Where are you going? Car? That's oh, a that's car. a car. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Yeah, you should see right, him now. Do you turn see? Turn around. Him? There you go. It looks like an angry spider chasing you. <laughs> That's awesome! Nice. It netted it perfectly. Right, I need to go, go uh, unplug it for it, Brent. So there's a lot involved mm -hmm. with a drone capturing another drone. Yep. It's pretty epic to watch though. Yeah, especially when you're going hunting with one bullet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you basically got one round in the chamber and you got to make it count. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were you were the uh, the target. Yep. And Rick Musselman, he did fantastic. He, he came down on you and he captured you pretty quick, huh? Yep. Yeah, definitely, really, really fast. So one thing to keep in mind here is if you're heading straight on, the speed's going to be doubled. So uh, he came up behind you and he slowly overtook you. And as he's overtaking you, he hit the button at the perfect moment. Now, there's a reason that we're looking towards this. A lot of people are using drones, unfortunately, for some bad reasons. Whether it's possibly delivering a bad agent, something like that. There's some real world concerns where small drones can actually pose a threat. And we've obviously seen that lately. But a really cool thing to see is the ingenuity coming up with people to overcome that. Yep. Now, we've seen a couple different things. We saw a net flying through the air, but it's kind of different wasn't it? Yeah, it was attached like S&M 100, I think. Yeah. Basically a big, a big copter pulling it through the air would, you eventually had to come over and snag it. And there's been, there's other means of doing it too. Like, you know, you can always yeah. grab your shotgun. Yeah. And, but the problem is, is there's some ordinances in some cities you can't use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing too is uh, people have also tried radar jammers. Mm -hmm. Those are actually very illegal in the US for, yeah. for most agencies. You can't use a GPS jammer. You can't use RF jammers, for, at least for private citizens right, right now. But that stuff is highly legal. And unfortunately we don't live in the age of rotor DR1, so we can't have our favorite Swede shooting them out of the air either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was pretty cool, mm -hmm. but now we're going to go ahead and test out and see if it's possible to take a fixed wing against a fixed wing, and we're going to use the Excipio to do that as well. So we have one mounted on the Kraken, awesome. and what are you flying, Peter? I'm going to fly your Sparrow. This awesome. is like one of the newer designs you're coming out with, isn't it? Yeah, it's not even released mm -hmm. yet. 
Kind of looks like a drone, like a yeah. Mini, it's, a, it's a little drone with a probably carry bar bombs and narcotics, you know, dangerous stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll start to capture it. Or Skittles or Mountain Dew. We'll see. Yeah. So the the goal is here. We have two cameras. We have a splitter, so I can see from the uh, the Excipio uh, view, so I can see where the gun's pointing, and then I can also fly off of the GoPro on the top. And uh, our hope is I can get behind you mm -hmm. and then net you before you get down to the end of the runway. Okay. Ready to put it to the test? Let's do it. All right. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> That's the best looking crack I've ever seen. I know! Now I'm flying the prototype, which is the heaviest version of the Excipio. I'm still under half throttle. Nice. All right, so I'm in top GoPro footage mode right now. I'm gonna go ahead and fly down. Look to acquire my target. <laughs> I'm excited about this! All right, I'm ready for some bait. I haven't chased a crack in a while. It's therapeutic, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna go to gun view here. Gun view activated. <laughs> that was so close! <laughs> How close was I to you? You look pretty close, but you're just a little bit off. Nice. Super soft you. landing. Reload! Reset. <laughs> Almost ended badly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's goggle up here. How close? You were really close. I thought you were going to get it. <laughs> Should I go oh, under man. it? Just under. <laughs> awesome. Master at them landing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I can do well. So taking on fixed wings proposed mm -hmm. its whole new challenges, but we did have some new benefits, didn't we? Yes. You had speed duration. You yes. could, like if you want to put over a crowd and circle and just wait for those fans to come up, you can actually catch them later on. Yes. So rather than have to have to launch all your machines, it's already up there, right? Wait and waiting for the perfect chance to strike. And one thing I noticed really easy, it was very easy to acquire, and especially if it was like a, a little sparrow, it was mm -hmm. going quite fast. It was easy to acquire and come up on it and try to overtake it. But the hard thing is, is just a little bit of pitch change. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to aim it, but I think there's going to need to be a solution for that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that'll be coming down the line. Definitely. Friends, I'd like you to meet Sean Tice. Now, Sean has been a dear friend of mine for about six years now, haven't you? That's correct. A matter of fact, when I was just getting into FPV, I stopped at his door to ask him a lot of advice because you've been pioneering this for how many years? Oh, we've been messing with this stuff uh, probably since 97, 98 time frame. And now he's actually the head of Tice UAV Solutions, and also it's a sister company of ours as well, too. He's part of the Lauren International Group. Now, Sean, you didn't design this to be flown on krakens and taking down uh, little sparrows. You designed this with a lot of different purposes. That's true and in fact even as the design progressed we found out there are other uses to it that we hadn't initially even thought about. Uh, initially we started to design the system to meet the uh, the bad or the the negative drone applications that would be coming down the line which of course we're already starting to see. Yeah. Uh, so of course we designed it with in mind for a drone to take down another drone so air to air. But as we developed this we also found out that there were other applications that we could actually use this for attacking or, or neutralizing a ground target. So, for 
from air to ground. Um, so we've been messing around with this design now for about a year uh, since the first inception. Of it. And now I got the flies on the Kraken, but you've had a lot more success than I've had. Uh, true, true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what we've done is we've tried to take into consideration any type of uh, scenario that would come about of you know a, a drone or something on the ground that needs to be netted or neutralized. So in doing that, we've actually developed a bunch of test scenarios that we have successfully stepped through. Uh, we've netted uh, things on the ground while hovering stationary. We've been moving through the air and netted things on the ground. We've done air to air, stationary, moving. Uh, we've even done air to ground of, of netting a person, and, and I was the, the lucky guy <laughs> You're the lucky who got guy. netted. Yeah. No one wanted to get in front of that. No though. one wanted to get in front of it but me. So. <laughs> well, I was really amazed your pilot, Rick Musselman, did a really good job on nabbing that. It almost seemed like you wanted us to go a little bit faster. Yes, yes. And well, now granted, he's been doing it a little bit longer, yeah. but I was very pleased and amazed at how well the system is done, even from the very first uh, prototype testing that we did. Mm -hmm. His success rate, literally eight out of 10 times, he was hitting it on the first shot, no matter what gotcha. we were doing. And, and any time that there was an issue, it was simply a matter of getting used to the system and how it looked in the camera in terms of where you were targeting, and which are things that we're working towards trying to actually make easier for everybody as an end user. Well, I can definitely appreciate the challenges that people have. And I noticed immediately when I put on the crack and there was some, you know, ranging. I know you helped me with ranging the gun and everything and trying to find it. A lot of different challenges with that, but you're actually designing the fixed wing platform, not the Kraken, uh, that people will be able to use to intercept these because speed is definitely something that a lot of the inventors have not addressed that uh, is a fast flying fixed wing platform. That's true. As part of being able to hit all those different scenarios that, that I listed, one of the things is, is that you don't know what this threat target is going to be like. Yeah. Is it going to be a slower moving quad or is it going to be a faster moving fixed wing? Yeah. So in order to respond to that, this netting system is going to be useless unless it's on a platform that can actually perform and keep up with what it's going after. Yeah. So we're actually developing a, a hybrid platform right now that will actually give you the best of both worlds between a rotorcraft and a fixed wing aircraft. So we'll have a real high sprint speed, but you'll be able, able to slow down and even hover uh, if you need to for acquiring a target. So, you know, with flight tests, we love the challenge. We love trying to do things personally, but you don't want people to miss. And you have a level of autonomy that you're designing this, don't you? That's true. As it is right now, we're trying to make it as simple as possible possible to uh, operate manually because it keeps the system low cost, it keeps it low weight, and we want to get that to market for end users as quickly as possible because it, it is a, definitely a, a very valuable asset and, and a usable tool. But our end goal that we envision, our end capability for the system is actually for this thing to be completely autonomous where in, in your camera you basically would find your target and tell the autopilot or the flight uh, unit that there's the target that we want to go after and you basically hit a bar button that arms the system. The system will take off track down, overrun, and net the uh, the target UAV all on its own. And so that kind of takes out the, yeah. the trick of you trying to line up and knowing when to hit the button. Yeah. That will all be taken care of uh, yeah. for you in, in the, the final version of the system. In this case, it's not going to be about skills. It's going to be about safety and security, Correct. which is really important. Now, we get around two at this, right? Yeah. There were some things that I, I've already seen that we can address on a real simple basis. But uh, yeah, you deserve a round two, and we <laughs> definitely want to see a round two on that. So friends, one thing I'm really excited about this is Sean is a wealth of knowledge. You have over, what, 30 years of doing this? Yeah, probably about that. <laughs> but he has a wealth of knowledge and he's going to be sharing that. So you can look for Sean on future videos. There's a lot of new techniques we want to show you guys. As people get more advanced in the hobby, they want to learn new techniques with new materials. Sean is going to be back showing us how to do things like fiberglassing over foam board, um, some really amazing techniques on molding, uh, and we want to share that with you. But also, if you want to follow this project or contact or collaborate, uh, Sean, how would they reach you? Well, the best way would be to go ahead and visit our website and that's TiceUAV.com. And additional contact information will be seen down below in the links. Friends, we want to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Come here, dude, quick! I'm coming! <laughs> <laughs>